no harm, no foul, dude. If you're going to get your road head, get your road head. But, I mean, pay better attention, dude. Like, don't – come on. You're driving down the road. You got to keep one hand on the wheel, JJ. I'm telling you, keep your eyes on the road. Welcome to the What's Our Verdict podcast, where we fashion ourselves cinematic judge and jury. My name is JJ Crowder. I'm here with my co-host, Matt Heiner. Better in the dead. And Ian Anderson. Some shit. For those of you missing Javier on this episode, he did have a big night last night. Javier did fight in the Utah State Boxing Championship, where he came in second, making him the number two ranked amateur heavyweight boxer in Utah. So we definitely want to take a second and congratulate him on that. We're very proud of his success in the ring and having him as a What's Our Verdict partner. So great job, Javier. As always, we appreciate your help growing the podcast. Go ahead and hit that follow or subscribe button. Tell a friend about us. Check out our website, whatsoverdict.com, where you can listen to all of our episodes. Sign up for our newsletter to get exclusive content and updates. Pick up some sweet, sweet merch. Interact with us in any way you'd feel inclined. And listen to our What's Our Verdict TV podcast as well. The question we always ask is, if you ever find yourself wondering if you should spend the time, money, or both on a movie, to help with that question, each week we put a movie on trial, discuss the facts, pass judgment, and let you know our verdict using a zero to five scale. Today we're reviewing Army of the Dead. It was released May 21st, 2021. It was written and directed by Zack Snyder. It stars Dave Bautista, Ella Purnell, Omari Hardwick, Anna De La Regra, Matthias Schweighofer, Garrett Dillahunt, Tig Notaro, Raul Castillo, and Hiroki Sanada. Following a zombie outbreak in Las Vegas, a group of mercenaries take the ultimate gamble, venturing past the quarantine zone to pull off the greatest heist ever attempted. Yeah, as I said in the spoiler-free review, that is a very generous intro that I am. Yeah, like, how can you cop the greatest heist ever? Yeah. (laughs) Seriously. So dumb. I, I'm pretty sure in Ocean's Eleven, while they didn't get 200 million, they were they were pretty close to like 160 or 180, and they were successful. Yeah, and they did it in under two hours. That too, and and then they were a lot funnier and clever. Oh, and I man. feel like for a zombie movie, if your motivation is going back to a heist of money, I just that doesn't grab me for a zombie movie. <laughs> Well, and like, I think to get started, like that's okay. First of all, let's talk about one of the. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me, let me just talk to my boy, Zack Snyder right now. How many times, how many times do you need to put your name on screen to tell me that you were part of this movie? I remember he was a part of the the screenplay or the screenwriting. He told me he directed this movie. He told me he did something. I I don't even, I think it was four times. Yes. Okay, great. Dude, he was actually like behind the camera for a lot oh, of this movie. Wow. Very, very proud of him. I've never seen a director put their name so many times <laughs> on a movie at the beginning. I'm like, oh, this dude. And it had to be, it was in little letters sometimes and it got a little bit bigger. And then the last one, it said directed by Zack Snyder at the end. The audacity of this guy. What he's telling me is his movies suck. <laughs> I just had to get that out there. It bothered me because... I'm definitely in JJ's camp now. I'm very much disliking Zack Snyder. If I see that he has another movie out, I'm probably going to steer our crew away from watching said movie by him because this guy just, he likes himself a little too much. He's an arrogant loser. The sad part is, is like, I liked him early on. Like I loved 300. I loved Dawn of the Dead. And those were his earlier movies. And then, and I didn't mind the original, like when he did Superman, when he did like Man of Steel. Like I liked the first Man of Steel with. Oh, I liked that movie. That was him. I I liked that movie. There were parts, but then after that, like. I, it he just got himself too much. Yeah. And I, I mean, I've, like I said, I've had issues with the way he films movies for a while. Like, I feel like he focuses too much on moments and not scenes. Like you do scenes, you make scenes great so that moments are impressive. You don't do impressive moments and then fill in the gap of those moments with scenes, which just feels more like what he does. And that worked for 300 very well, because I mean, what else do you, I don't need a lot of scenes for that movie, but the scenes were really good, and then there were, there were fantastic moments. So, I, but I, he recently, like he just, yeah, like he, like you say, he's kind of feels himself a little much and gets a little too into to overdoing things. But I will say one thing about this movie is the intro had me hooked. Like I, I was sad because at first I was like, oh yeah, I like this because they, you know, you have this convoy driving really odd scene of this couple getting married in Vegas, and then you know some obligatory roadhead is which you know I can't 
<laughs> no harm, no foul, dude. If you're going to get your road head, get your road head. But, I mean, pay better attention, dude. Like, don't – come on. You're driving down the road. You got to keep one hand on the wheel, JJ. <laughs> I'm telling you, keep your eyes on the road. Keep them open. I get it, bud. It was hard. It was hard work, but, you know. But we have this crash, right? And, like, it's so bad that this box is this – you know, I love the dialogue where they're trying to figure out – they just picked this thing up from Area 51. Is it an alien? They don't come out and say it. I really enjoyed the first 20 minutes of this movie. That's a fair um, point. They had they had they had a strong setup. Yeah. It was more like yeah. five yeah. minutes though. Yeah. Was it, it was only five minutes? It, it, like, it was like a very small portion of this movie. It felt way long to me. Like <laughs> Maybe that was yeah. But the ambiguous like, well, nature of that, like at that point, I liked because we didn't know a bunch about where said zombie came from, why they were transporting. I mean, all those things they were trying to figure it out. But then I feel like that began to work less and less for this movie because they didn't give me a lot of concrete details on kind of timeline or why this happened. They they threw little bits and pieces there, and I felt like I was having to piece together more of the motivations of the characters to what really happened with Vegas, how long, how many years later this all was. I didn't enjoy that as much because I, I don't know. I wanted to piece more of it together. None of it really made sense. And if you're telling me that those people wanted to go in for 200 million and they knew the type of zombies that were in there and why, like, and then how easy would it is to get into the quarantine, the inside the city, you just open a door and you, and you could go and I'm like, yeah, like, I just don't see that happening because if those zombies are that smart, then they would have realized we can get out of here. And uh, it's just, there's a lot of stuff that didn't mesh and make sense. I didn't enjoy the credits because it didn't make the opening credits didn't make sense to me. Like I get that they're showing that there was an outbreak in Vegas, but I'm like the good cut. And like you said, you don't know how long it's been. It's obviously been a while because now the strip is surrounded by nothing but desert. And I mean, anybody that's been to the strip, that's not, what that looks like you know what I mean? like there's a lot of houses that are oh yeah I was close say, and businesses they didn't have and, the suburbia around there because i i mean yeah. i lived there for a long a while yeah so i mean i guess that. it's one of those things where i'm like i would have liked to have known you know was this five years later was this 10 years yeah. later what does that just so i have an understanding of why there was some desert and i didn't love like how do you contain something like that like if it's spreading that fast yeah. like how do you contain that by slowly dropping shipping containers around the strip with helicopters like it gave her a cool visual that and the very end of the the opening credits where you they drop that one shipping container on that lady and all those zombies and unfortunately her daughter but that's the only thing that you got out of that again a very Zack snyder moment this cool moment of oh shit we're gonna close this thing off and this superhero or the part of these heroic group is gonna get killed because she's stuck under this and they smush her with it but how the fuck do you contain an entire city of zombies with shipping containers uh, come yeah. on please the tell same us how. way it's the same way you run an entire casino off a random generator and just a few gallons of gas <laughs> <laughs> that's fair that's i thought fair about that point. too i was like wait is this generator once you get gas in that it it's just self-powering and, and keeps working <laughs> Yeah, one one gallon, of, one freaking tank of gas kept it going. That's funny. <laughs> and they're up and down, up and down a number of times. Or, or when elevator. your helicopter overheats and you don't have all the tools to fix it, but it still works. Like it, it just it looks like it's from Mash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man so the introduction to the characters bothered me too like because you get it in these snippets in in the intro credits with like them holding up images of their family like a picture and i think they only did it with like two of them where they had a picture of their yeah, family it makes sense yeah it just was really odd like it was hit or miss like and then the, and here's so and this is gonna sound stupid but one of my biggest disappointments is omari hardwick's character and i can never remember his name because it was an odd name but the dude Vanderho. the big Vander Vander that's right with the big saw, like the only time we get to see him use the fucking saws in the intro credits. Yeah, I thought he was going to use it again. They never did. I'm like, why do you carry this son of a bitch? And the only thing you use it is some, you know, the coyote to cut a wall down at the end. Fuck off. I'd be running around with that thing just to run around and chop zombies up with that thing. It was such a waste of a great weapon. So you had to plug it in, JJ. God, it was so dumb. But yeah, like from the very beginning, the intro credits, like I was starting to go rut row. As soon as those started rolling, because I was like, this just well, feels yeah. rushed. They tried so hard with the music and oh. uh, again, I just keep coming back to that. I, I don't like movies that force jokes upon me. And but then they, they kind of set it up that way. But then the movie didn't turn out to be 
that funny or even try to be that funny later. So then I was confused about what type of movie I actually was watching. Was this a hardcore like zombie movie where people are going to die and it's tense and scary? It wasn't really that. But then it tried to be kind of a, a funny somewhat zombie movie, but it wasn't really that. So then what kind of a movie was it really just a really long movie? Yeah, that tried really hard to. I mean, can someone can someone explain to me how a zombie becomes super fast zombie versus normal, boring, sleepy zombie? I didn't understand how one versus the other came about. The main one, like if the main one bites you, you become one of the alphas. But if like one of the alphas bites bites you, you're just like another slow, average zombie, I guess. But there was so many inconsistencies with that too, like. Or when, how someone... quickly people turned versus yeah, others. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Versus Vanderhoof, it's a couple days. God. Yeah. Well, and not only that, but like, why do some of their eyes glow blue? You know what I mean? Like, there was a couple of the alphas, as they called them, that their eyes glow, glowed blue a couple mm-hmm. times. And then, like, they all had like a gl- blue glow to their blood. And I'm like, in so... their brain. Like... Yeah. Like, it was really odd. Like, I'm just like, explain better like you gave me a really cool intro you have this character set up with the guy that's like the head of security for sonata and then you you don't give me you show the betrayal which was lame fucking reveal by the way which i saw coming like 12 miles before it ever got there but you still did it have him explain how these fucking what this main guy was like why is he the way he was obviously we did experiments obviously he's military created fine but how why like beyond having a zombie army don't just throw it in there as a throwaway line oh it annoyed me and i gotta say i gotta give advice at this point because if you suspect that one of your group members is out to betray you all i highly recommend you don't grab him and say i don't trust you to watch our backs we're gonna have a conversation after and then put him out in front of you like just some friendly advice not the way to Someone. As you're walking into the most dangerous part of your mission to that point. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's, there's a big inconsistency right there. The Kaido says it's too dangerous to go outside. So what do they do? They go inside. And as they walk through a bunch of these hibernating zombies and you don't touch them and whatnot, make all that happen. Stuff breaks down. Lots of gunfighting. And then after that, after that, those that that girl dies then they're just outside again and they're just walking outside doing their thing. And you're like, so wait, why did we ever need to go inside to go outside again? That, that didn't make any sense to me because yeah. then they spent their time outside. So it's like, well, it, that just seemed dumb. So we went inside. So one of the people could die and we did that just because we needed to stuff like that with this movie. And then the other thing that bothered me these people don't have enough ammo. If they know that they're going to be fighting hundreds of thousands of zombies, they probably have, I don't know, four, 500 rounds maybe per person. Maybe they have a little bit more. But even then, they don't have enough. And then all these people that don't know how to shoot, like the the safe cracker to Dave Batista's daughter, the volunteer, getting headshots left and right with these super zombies. Come on. Come on. No, I'm with you. And I was pissed, too, when they went inside because I was like, wait a minute, you just paid a toll to the zombie queen so that you could be there and they'll leave you alone. Why wouldn't you just walk? But then you're not you're like, I'm not walking on their streets. What? And for the coyote, wouldn't she know a safer passage? Like they get in there and she's like, oh, I've seen this once before. This is where they're hibernating. Like it it doesn't make she's a pretty crappy coyote. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, I mean, I think we learned that pretty early on, considering the fact that she leaves behind people. Leaves half the people. <laughs> like, and it sounds like on a regular fucking basis, she leaves people behind. So pretty terrible coyote True. to begin with. But I'm just like, I, yeah, and I'm, I'm with Matt. And I was like, I don't understand why if you just paid the toll, which was an incredibly cool scene to me. Like, yeah, that was cool. It was compelling. I liked Not that scene. Fun. Not only for the fact that the guy was a complete douchebag, which they set that up as clunky as they set it up, they set it up and then she gives him over. I liked that scene, but then you waste it by saying we can't walk their streets. Then what the fuck did you just pay the toll for so that you could stand in that one spot? Like, come on. I would have liked it better if they had paid the toll. She walks him directly to that casino. And then there's a freaking bunch of damn zombies in the casino that they have to clear it out before they can start to 
get into the the vault at that point right so mm. to me that would be much more entertaining you get to and then you have like these creative ways that they're killing guys you can have Dieter being a chicken shit running around screaming his head off which was enter- the only entertaining part of this movie to me was Dieter so I and then you get to see Vanderho use the big saw at that point you know what I mean there was so many things that you could have done with this big epic battle it cuts out 30 minutes of the traveling to this fucking wow. casino there's some tension there and then the whole time you can still have the everything that's going on with well i don't even want to say that because i did i thought the the storyline that they played into with when the alphas was dumb too so when they saw that crew that had tried to break into the vault before and they were lined up on the ground didn't that it was so it was confusing me because one of the person had like the same necklace as that girl and then the guy was talking about alternative realities and stuff like that and then he hit the trigger switch but that was confused because it seemed like, but was, was that the case? And but then they never talked about it again. It just seemed like a weird thing to insert to make me think that. But then it was nothing ever really a part of the movie. I don't know. That confused me. I think that was Zack Snyder pulling on his own pecker because because what like why did why did he do that? There was no point because it was everybody that every dead body they showed had some connection to one of those characters, the necklace. Mm -hmm. And really what it was is it showed every character that died. Okay. And so you had Mm -hmm. the one that had, that was wearing the same shirt as the pilot. Mm -hmm. There was the necklace. There was one that had something that I can't remember what it was that attached him to Dieter, but it showed every person that died in this thing was already dead and had come through. And so, but there was no point to it like other than him like having some cute little line from Vanderho that said you know here's the plot to all these damn movies you know what i mean like I was, yeah i didn't fucking i didn't get it i thought it was a waste of time i feel like that's what a lot of this movie is where there's just so many things that didn't really have a point that connected and they kind of add up to just be uh, confusing like mm-hmm. I know whether even some of the plot points like with Dave Bautista and, and Kate, I can't remember the actor's name, but it like shows him killing his wife, her mother. And then they kind of like have one conversation about it and everything's hunky dory. And they realize that, sorry, that's all right. Yeah. Anyway, I thought I heard somebody. Um, yeah, it, it's just, I feel like there's a lot of these little points that add up to just be confusing. Well, and there's no payoff to like the, weird relationship between dave batista's character and then the actress anna de la regera like i don't understand like all of a sudden like they were friends and now all of a sudden she's in love with this dude and then like i felt like they were just setting it up so that the payoff of the the alpha snapping her neck in front of him had like more weight but i don't need that like that didn't add anything to the story to me like it was just it's kind of like where we matt where you brought up this whole alternate timeline or alternate reality time travel whatever the hell you want to call it line and throw away shit it's like he was trying to force all of these like tropes in to make this movie more weighty the whole guy the security guard guy being a rapist slash using his lording over his power with these refugees and the timeline thing then this like love story that was unneeded the angsty daughter who hates her dad or stepdad which you never really know which one it is for killing the mom who was a zombie trying to eat the daughter like i'm just like you're forcing too much shit that doesn't need to be there just make a fun tense zombie movie quit trying to make it something it's not and that it was never meant to be you know what i mean i do i honestly i thought that they could have cut out kate's character in that whole like subplot had a shorter movie and it would have been a little more focused there's a couple of opportunities for them to do that on in multiple sections of the movie where it could have been more of an actual focused on the zombie movie than all these random subplots but you did bring up later and i just want to give dieter and vandero their credit because they got me through half this movie (laughs) The Uh-oh. the one trope that they put in there that actually worked for me was the buddy, the buddy movie, because those yeah. two cracked my shit up. Like, I did have a good time with those two. Especially when they, like, open the safe. Dieter, like, turns to him, Mr. Vendro, will you do the honors? And, like, they built this little <laughs> rapport. That I had got a chuckle out of that, but it wasn't yeah. enough to redeem the movie by any stretch. 
not even remotely. It was just only little spots of entertainment throughout a way oh, too long movie that wasn't. Fun. Yeah. No, thank you. Can someone explain to me how the tiger turned zombie? Did someone bite the tiger? And because usually in zombie movies, you either have, well, unless like I Am Legend, I think is one of them where you had zombie people, zombie dogs, but then other ones, it's either zombie people and the animals are safe. I don't know. I just, that whole tiger thing just seemed like another escapade where they clearly set it up that the security guy was going to die by the tiger, but they wasted a lot of time with that again. I I think Ian said it best. There's just so many who've all been saying it. That could have been another 10 minutes of the movie we didn't need. It just didn't have to be that way. They wanted to set up a really cool death scene, but it took a long time to get there. And I think it was just another piece of weight that it wasn't compelling to me. You could have... I feel like you could have come in and said, hey, we're putting together a team. There's these alpha zombies and we need to find a cure. And we're putting together a team to go in there and kind of get some samples. And then later you find out they're trying to make their own army of zombies. That would have been more interesting. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's a bunch of millions of dollars in this vault in the casino. So I just feel like there's so many ways they could have made this better. So many ways. I think it comes back to that. It's just the motivation yeah, the money sounds nice, but I think we're all smart enough people that $200 million in there, I just don't think most people would be like, yeah, let me go get that thing knowing how bad it really was in there. Because that that's, you know, I think to your point, they didn't really set up the knowledge of there's these super zombies versus regular zombies. And if I had really known that and if they'd explained that weight more, I don't know if the motivations for this, they didn't have enough motivations to really, in my opinion, make a decision like that. And then Dave Batista's character letting his daughter come in with what he knew about how bad it was. Like, I'm sorry, I don't care how much your daughter hates you. Give it to the authorities, whatever you need to do. You're not going to let her go. You just, you're not going to let her go in with you. And that was just a cop out to me. It took him, what, 30 seconds to be like, oh, I'm sorry. Come with us. Like, no way. Well, that, and it was just a complete and utter waste of time setup it was just so that they could drag the movie out longer and make him have to go have the showdown yeah, with the, so the alpha the guy they called zeus so it's just like what the fuck like i don't as soon as she he said okay you can come i'm like oh well there's our forced stay in the place too long because she's yeah. gonna go running off to find those girls and i'm like First of all, look, I get being a humanitarian. She's trying to save everybody. She lost her mom to this whole thing. But fuck off. You have just been in a zombie war. You've been you've watched people die. Your dad's in the middle of this thing. Are you really going to go back for one person in the middle of this mess? Shut the fuck up. I don't yeah. care who you are. I don't care how cool you think you are. That's not happening. And so it's it's a stretch for me to believe that she was that worried about one person. And I was really feeling good about it for a second when they were first having the argument. And he's like, no, she's not going in. And I thought he'll just say, we'll look out for her. And then they can randomly have them run into her in the process of this whole thing. Like make the money be in the hotel that these alphas are in, right? That to me would have been more realistic and it cuts a third of this movie out because you don't have the transition between what's going on with the alphas and what's going on with these humans. You pay the toll, you go right to the hotel and go, son of a bitch, this is the same hotel that on the top floors these guys are living in. Now we have to be quiet. We have to focus on that as opposed to, you know, you have this forced storyline where it's going to keep you in the city too damn long. It just... God, they just did so much. And I think what you said, you know, for me, the potential of this movie is what makes it even worse than it actually was. I'm fine if you make a bad movie, but don't give me a movie that has all the potential in the world to be a kick ass movie with some cool story beats and some great relationships and some cool characters that I wanted to know more about. But you didn't have time to tell me because you were overbloating it with this giant tiger that we spend 10 minutes with. I love the tiger. But how cool would it have been? You see the tiger at first. He's like, oh, no, that's crossing a line. And then you randomly see it on occasion in the background of a shot wandering the the line like it did. But then you forget about the damn tiger until the end when this guy, you think he's going to get away. Then the tiger comes back, mauls this motherfucker. And it's a surprise because you forgot about the tiger because you only saw it in the very beginning. But they make the tiger such a focal point that you know what's going to happen when that guy sneaks out. You're like, oh, here comes the tiger. Because he's so weirded out by it. It just, there were so many things you could have done. And it to me, as a filmmaker who's controlling, like Matt's pointed out through the credits, who's controlling this entire movie. He wrote it. 
He directed it. He filmed the fucking thing. The guy was behind the camera as a cameraman for over half of this movie I was reading. Why take all that time? And this is the the problem with being that involved. If you're going to direct, direct. If you're going to write and direct, write and direct. But let other people who are better, obviously, at filming and doing other parts of this, if you do it all, it becomes an ode to Zack Snyder. And guess what, Zack? You don't make that good of movies when you do it all yourself. That's what he's tried to do now. And that's just where he's not going to watch his next movie, probably. It's rough. Screw him. Can I make one more nitpicky comment? Because I sure. just a ton of those, this movie. But so Kate starts towards this Olympus building where her friend is being held. She starts on the bottom floor. No electricity in this building. De Batista flies a helicopter to the top floor. Somehow they find themselves in the middle. And there's only nine minutes left until the bomb drops. I've swalked up stories of building before and it is murder. <laughs> anything over like three flights of stairs so just just saying like it was just random stuff like that or the security guy that you guys were talking about who says he's gonna go up to the helicopter but then he gets killed outside the building didn't get that like the elevator right it up so just so many stupid little things there were definitely continuity errors throughout this movie and to kind of touch on something that Mattson already mentioned, the end of this movie, like I can forgive it, like for a funny moment with Dieter, where he's like all of a sudden a crack shot right out the gate and shooting bottles and cans and shit. But the end of this movie, like when they're escaping and the alphas come out, like is like a lesson in unrealistic gunfighting. Dave Bautista at the end when they're running through that casino and he's just like hip firing and spraying and he's mowing down headshots of fucking waves of alpha zombies. I'm like, first off, two things. When they show all those alphas in that of uh, that skylight pool room where, you know, he's like making out with his queen before they get ready to fucking kill that security guy from the camp or whatever that the they gave to him. It didn't look like there were that many alpha zombies. And at the end of this movie, it's like they have this unlimited number of alpha zombies that are coming after them until they blow them all up with the grenades. At the But I'm just like, come on, man. Nobody gets that many headshots. And like you said, Matt, and even his daughter, who I'm sure she he taught how to fire a gun. But come on, you got a handgun and you're hitting nine out of ten shots in a headshot with one. And you're not like you're not supporting the grip. You're not, you're just one hand out, pop, 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 pop. These fucking full speed running, zigzagging zombies. Damn, these were the greatest freaking militia on the planet. The U.S., we just need to get these, all these people in the army and just send them out because this, they could wipe out an entire army by themselves because they never miss a shot. To that point, wasn't so Batista's character, or Scott, Scott was given like the Medal of Honor or something, right? Yeah. And then we find him flipping burgers. Did they ever say why that happened? Okay. Just just checking. Just checking. Yeah. And that's the other thing is all these people saved the, like the whole, all these people in the city, they were obviously praised as heroes in Vegas and yet they're all doing shit jobs and like being forgotten. I'm like our hero complex in the United States would never let that happen. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, but if you kill a few Russians, man, that's yeah. all you got to do in the movie business. Then you're pretty cool. Exactly. Zombies, it gets you to flip burgers. God. <laughs> well, and the other one, like the forced jokes of like the food truck throughout this movie. I'm like, God, dude, this shit isn't funny. And then he's dying yeah. at the end. And he makes some joke about lobster rolls. And she actually like laughs audibly. I'm like, come on. This dude, they just got out of a helicopter crash behind a nuclear explosion He's dying and turning into a zombie in front of her, and she laughs at a lobster roll joke? Come on. He was hungry. Yeah. God. So stupid. So bad. And then Vanderhoek. Or we you know we we did talk about the thing I want to say is they had they had over a day to make this happen, but then all of a sudden yeah, arbitrarily. this just in news report. Actually, even though the president thought it's very cool to nuke the Las Vegas on the 4th of July, we're going to speed it up by a day. So instead of having 25 hours, we have an hour and a half. And to me, that did nothing but just make this movie look stupid because I wasn't like, oh, my gosh, they have less time. I was like, really? Like, what? It was just so random. It was such a stupid thing because I was like, no, 
they would have done it on the 4th of July. Like, I think about it and I'm like, they wouldn't have given in to protests because it's on the 4th. Fuck off. They'd have just and blown protesting shit up on the 4th of what, July. dude? These yeah. people are, it's a zombie city. What, are we going to keep them there forever because they have rights? They yeah. were once American citizens. <laughs> like, what are we protesting about? Blow them up. Send them to hell. Like, what? Seriously. So, I'm just coming out and be like, look, I don't care if you don't approve me as president. We're not the bad. We're not leaving a zombie city in the middle of the United States and being cool with it. That's when you come and say, guys, we have a lot of other things to protest about. Zombies ain't one of them. <laughs> but well, you know like- what? They would find a way to protest about that shit. See, one thing oh, I did like shit. about this movie, the YouTube guy that had his channel where he'd go in and kill zombies, I was like, you know what? We would be all about that. That would be happening all over the place. That was the one thing this movie got right. I was like, oh, we yeah. would be doing that. <laughs> for sure. I'm protesting for zombies? Dude, what am I going to go outside and protest for blades of grass that I'm supposed to mow tomorrow? Like, oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> like, come Ooh, on, can- man. Most people would be like, don't drop a nuke. We'll all go, a bunch of rednecks would be like, we'll all go in and shoot them up for you. Let us go in and kill them. Yeah, just, wouldn't just send like the state of Alabama and yeah. Mississippi and Georgia. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> like, if you don't want to have, if you don't want to have radiation poisoning, I get that. But man, just send a couple states. We'll all be more kumbaya after that. Seriously. <laughs> Nothing um, like a little zombie love to bring the United States back together. <laughs> Sorry to all of our Southern listeners, though I am from the South, so I'm allowed. Yeah, it's this movie sucks. And then let's talk about Vanderhoof for a second. Like, first of all, I watched this entire fight, which was a cool moment, by the way, where he gets to protect his little friend Dieter and show that he's a badass and takes on the alpha, gets his ass handed to him, which I love. But he still tries and he's fighting to the end. I watched because I specifically wanted to see where he gets his bite. Because you knew that this alpha was going to want to turn this dude because he's a badass, right? So I was watching for him and watching for him. He never got bit in the fight. Like, visibly only came close the one time when he was going to bite him. And you could see that he was getting ready to bite him on the forearm. And then he got away from it. So I was annoyed as fuck when he's on that plane. And there's this weird rib cage bite. That's obvious. And it wasn't like a little bite. This was an obvious bite. I was like, now, when did that happen from the times he was getting thrown into the wall, thrown into the cage? I was like, come on, man. Like, and then it, like you said, it takes him at least a couple of days to turn. Might have been longer than that. Like, cause he's wandering the desert till he finds McCarran airport or what's left of it. Come on. Such a stretch. Even just having, it just isn't unnecessary. Like what? I mean, unless you're following this up with now a zombie movie in Mexico City. Like, and what's they're the... talking about it. Oh, geez. We're not watching that. No. No, he would not. have been dead because the airport, wherever he went to, McCarran Airport is literally in the heart of Las Vegas as a city. So I don't know where he was going. And if he, he found to somewhere. Utah, man. Oh, that's right. He was in Utah. Oh, that's he right. found that car and then drove to Utah. Yeah, That's, life elevated. They probably went to St. George or something, and they wouldn't have helped him out. Well, what private? I guess there is one in air. There's an air, little airport. So you just put stacks of cash, and no one's going to question where said cash came from. It's like, oh, yeah. money is king. I mean, I wish I would didn't believe that. <laughs> but yeah, they're planning on making mo- other movies. So they're talking about two more movies, follow-up movies to this. They've already yeah. greenlit two animated shows based in this universe. One that I'm very interested in. Maybe watching an episode because it's focused on Dieter. Why Dieter? <laughs> what? I know if he's dead. And then I don't like, remember what the other one. one. Well, it's it's prequel shit. They, like they're basically oh. they set up all these characters gotcha. and then they're talking about creating these prequel cartoons or animated series to introduce these characters. So JJ, Dieter, no. Dieter's the only one that I would watch. Like I can't even. Yeah, it just was such a weird... How do you do Dieter because he has zero zombie experience? Like, what? I don't get... I don't think it would be a zombie movie. I think it's about him being a thief and how he learned how to crack safe. Man, it's called it's, it's called Army of Thieves. It's a prequel spinoff that will focus on the master code breaker Ludwig Dieter. So that the movie, definitely a prequel, will focus on Dieter during the, the early days of the zombie outbreak. And they just wrapped on it. Army of Thieves. Wow. So, yeah. 
And then oh, yeah. they're doing an animated inspired prequel series called Army of the Dead Lost Vegas. And it tells Dave Bautista's or Scott's origin story and several other key actors from the film. So it'll tell Ella Purnell, the daughter, and then well, Anna De La Riguera, I don't watch it because the end result is he's flipping burgers. So great. Well, yeah, like that's exciting. my problem. Like you're setting up a prequel, bunch of prequel stuff for a shit movie. It wasn't yeah, good. They should pull the plug on that immediately. Yeah, well, I guess it's all they've already wrapped filming like this shit was done. So uh, Netflix has a a contract with Zack Snyder. So, I mean, the guy was going to get plenty of stuff like this moving forward because of it. But you think Zack Snyder walks around in his house and he has different rooms and hallways where his name lights up at various (laughs) sizes and different roles. And he just walks in like, it's really good to see my name that I painted this room I bought the rug for this room. Oh, this is the chair I designed last week and I built it. But then when he sits in it, it explodes. It falls apart. <laughs> His wall, like all of a sudden changes color. And like, Man. this guy, this it's guy possible. just feels some type of way about himself. It's possible. He's probably got an office with one of those director's chairs. It's got his name on it. And that's like his office you- chair. All right. Well, we're ready to rate this thing. Yeah, let's be done. Let's oh. move. We've talked about this movie far too long. All right. Yeah, I'll kick us off again. So this movie was bad. It's just bad across the board. And the worst part about it, and I think the reason it'll get one of my lower scores that I've ever given is because of the fact that it had so much potential. It had intriguing characters. It had some interesting story. It had a really good intro that set me up for something that turned out to be shit. But like the first 10 minutes of this movie are the best part of this movie. And then it just goes to hell after that. Too many plot holes, too many coincidences and just things that just didn't need to happen. There was just too many obvious things that were going on in order to move this movie forward in an unnecessary way, trying too hard to tell weird stories and overcomplicate it and throw in all the tropes you can possibly see instead of just making a good movie and telling a good story. You don't need two and a half hours to do that. So many movies prove that. An hour and a half, an hour to 45 minutes, you can tell a great story with great intriguing characters and good good action. This is just trying too hard and just overbloating everything, and it just missed. It did not work. I will give it that some of, like, the violence is there. If you're looking for a violent zombie movie, it's there. There's some interesting kills. The I can I cannot remember her character's name, which is fine, but the girl at the elevator, when she gets her neck, neck completely turned around and the vertebrae, like, pops out of the side, that shit was wickedly cool looking. When the guy gets his face, his head chewed up, chewed up by the tiger, that was cool. I just didn't need the five-minute chase scene leading up to him getting mauled by the tiger um there was some cool kills there was some cool action but the story sucked and didn't make sense in so many places that i just can't rate this movie very well so i'm giving this movie a one it's my second lowest score i've ever given it's bad and it's disappointing and it could have been great ian what about you buddy i'm trying to remember what my lowest ratings have been but yeah it's for all the reasons you just said jj i want to second that stuff because and all the subplots that were unnecessary, be more precise in the story that you're telling, condense it, focus on a few main things instead of trying to overwhelm with all this. Look over here, look over here, look over here. Yeah, I. it's not worth watching, in my opinion. And it's like the acting was decent. I feel it's one of those like the actors were decent, but they were given such crap to work with that it couldn't have like the acting's not going to save it if you're you know your dialogue and your storyline are crap so it's not worth watching i think i'm going to follow suit with jj and do a one as well all right Matson, uh I'm bringing this home you guys have already all said it this movie doesn't deserve any more breath for me i'm giving it a 0.5 reason being this movie if it was an hour and a half and we were saying the same things okay like give it a one it's it's a We've seen some bad movies, like She Dies Tomorrow, and it was just weird, quirky, didn't make it. But this movie is close to me on that par because it failed so miserably. This movie could have been so much more, but they crammed so much stuff in that had nothing to do with what we were trying to watch. And the fact that it was two hours and 40 minutes, basically, and you had to just grit your teeth and get through it, to me... It was it was torture by the end where I was literally watching because this is what we do sometimes we bite the bullet and we make this happen this movie I probably I think I honestly would have stopped watching if I didn't have to watch for this because it was that bad that bad in my opinion because I I didn't it's not even I had a case of high expectations I had decent expectations but you guys have already all said it none of this movie made sense they tried to fit too many things and it tried too hard because of that it just bothered me and. 
Never watch again. Absolutely. You couldn't pay me a hundred dollars today to go watch this. No way. You couldn't yeah. honestly could not pay me two hundred dollars to go sit down and watch this again. I wouldn't do it. It's a rough one. No, I'm with you. I I will never even remotely come close to this movie again. So well, if bad. anybody does want to pay two hundred dollars, I'll take them up on that. It's like hundred dollars. <laughs> but now, you man. can't you it's can't do rate. anything else. And you got to put your phone away. You have to sit there. You got to stay awake, full attention. Oh yeah, man. Hundred bucks an hour. You got me. I'm there. <laughs> Worst day I, job ever. I, I <laughs> when you look at it like that. Okay. Yeah, I, I appreciate your honesty. I think I would consider it, and then I would ask if I could get paid to watch something else. <laughs> Maybe she dies tomorrow. <laughs> I think I'd take two hundred dollars for well, she dies tomorrow shorter. over this one because that one, like at least with that one, I had low expectations going in. This one, like I wanted it to be good, so it disappoints me and it hurts my soul that it's so bad. Yeah. All right. Well, there's our rating. I skipped this movie, guys. Uh, we, you know, we suffered through it so that we could tell you you don't need to. It's not worth watching. Wait for you know another month and then watch like the best parts on YouTube, and that's be that'll be good enough. So or, with that, Matt, what was wait, that in? Or wait one more week and go watch The Quiet Place. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of. Next week, we will be reviewing A Quiet Place. Unfortunately, Matson will have to miss that one, right? I will be there. I'll be in the Redwoods of California, but I cannot tell our listeners. So sad I won't be able to watch it live with everyone and then record. I'm very much looking forward to this movie. This is will be a case of high expectations and hopefully meeting somewhere around there because if it doesn't, it will break my heart because I'm really looking forward to this movie. Yeah, me too. And I'm I'm itching for a good movie. It's been a while, guys, since we've done a great movie. So I, I'm really hopeful for this one. So yeah, next week, watch for that. And then hopefully June, there's some good movies rolling out. Going to really work to make Force Javier into watching a horror movie. So I'm trying to get a sponsor that'll sponsor us for that one just so that we can get him to watch it. But I'll let you guys know how that goes. We'll, we'll send out in our email at the beginning of the month to let you know what's coming in June and if I was successful or not. With that, Matt, so tell them where they can find us. Yeah, come check us out on whatsaverdict.com, Facebook and Instagram. Come listen to us on Ghana, Apple, Spotify. Tell us what you want us to review. Come drop us a comment like our super fan Alec always does. Check out our merch store. We'd love to hear from you. Really excited to, to bring you a great movie next week as well with uh, A Quiet Place 2, as you guys have heard us talk about. I think it's probably what we've been looking forward to for, I would say, many, many months. So get excited. Yeah. And speaking of that, I'm glad you said something about Alec. He will be joining us for a quiet place too. So how is he? He's he, filling my spot. That's awesome. Yeah, he's, he's gonna very come cool, in Alec. And he's gonna be reviewing that with us. So come very check cool. out our super fan. We're excited to have him back on. He's done one movie with us before and we're excited to have him back on. So we look forward to that. Yeah, with that said, check us out. We appreciate you tuning into this movie and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Cinemagic out. <laughs>